Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and I post weekly what's for dinner videos and random recipes in between. If you are into that sort of thing, be sure to hit that like button for me and subscribe to my channel. It really helps my channel out and I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family. <laughs> Today I have four awesome, easy, family friendly recipes for you. And today is also a special one because it is in collaboration with Taylor Elmore. And I'm sure always just assume most of y'all have probably heard of her. If you have not go head over to her channel, be sure to show her some love and let her know I sent you. She is so close to 20,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, be sure to do so and let's get started. First, I'm gonna make a chili from Jeffrey over at Press Your Luck. I will have his channel linked down below if you don't already know about him. Everything I've made of his in my instant pot so far has been amazing, so I had to try the chili. First, I have a little bit of oil and butter melting in my pressure cooker, and I diced up an onion, a jalapeno, and also some red pepper I had in the freezer, as well as three garlic cloves. Now I only changed up a couple of things in this recipe just because of what I had on hand. He actually called for, I think, habanero and something else, but like I said, I'll have a link down below instead of the red pepper, but red pepper was all I had and it turned out really good. So you're gonna just saute those up until they are nice and, you know, good looking. <laughs> I don't know, caramelized. And then you're gonna throw in your ground beef and cook it till it's almost all the way cooked. And then you're gonna throw in a can of diced tomatoes, a can of tomato sauce, some beef broth or beer is actually what the recipe calls for, a can of Rotel, a little bit of hoisin sauce. I didn't have any of that either, so I used barbecue, taco sauce, and then Yes, Worcestershire sauce, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. And then you're gonna be putting in quite a few different spices. Like I said, I'll have the actual recipe down below where you can find all the details. And then you're gonna just mix everything up really well. Then you're going to pour your drained and rinsed kidney beans on top. And the recipe says do not stir. I don't know exactly why. If anybody else knows, <laughs> I'm sure Jeffrey has a reason. But he says not to stir it. And then you're going to put your pressure cooker on high for five minutes. And once it is all done cooking and you have done your quick release, you're gonna put in two to four tablespoons of the chili better than bouillon base and stir it up really well and let it sit with the keep warm setting on for about 10 minutes or so. And then it's ready to serve. And I just put the typical oyster crackers and sour cream and cheese on mine, but especially for how quick this was, the flavors in this chili, if you have an instant pot and you haven't tried chili in it yet, I highly recommend his recipe. Now I'm gonna share a pasta recipe that I found a few years ago and it has been a favorite of ours ever since. Sometimes I will do an actual onion, but I wanted to try this Weber's caramelized onion seasoning that I had gotten recently at Sam's in this. And honestly, I just didn't feel like cutting up an onion. So I have a little bit of oil here, some minced onion, and then, I'm sorry, minced garlic. And you can either have the onion here or like what I did, two cans of fire roasted tomatoes, 
the actual recipe just calls for diced tomatoes, but I just love the look and the flavor of the fire roast to give this. And then a little bit of Italian seasoning. No, I'm sorry, not Italian seasoning, oregano, oregano, basil, salt, and pepper. And then a little bit of crushed red pepper. That heat in this, just a little bit, is probably my favorite part. But then you're going to just kind of mix it up. You're gonna let that cook for about five minutes or so. And then put in two tablespoons of tomato paste, a half a cup of water, and stir that up really well. And at this point too, you're going to have a box of penne noodles boiling. I have doubled the recipe. The original recipe calls for half of a box and <laughs> there's six of us over here, there's no way. But then, once you have got your tomato paste in here and everything, you're going to put in your softened cream cheese and stir it around with a whisk like you see here until it is well incorporated. The recipe also calls for grated Parmesan, but I had some shredded this time and it decided to use it. And I don't know if it was just the Parmesan or the Weber seasoning and changing that up, but my husband and honestly, I think so too. This was the best version of this I have ever made. And then you're gonna throw in a bunch of spinach. <laughs> I don't remember the ounce, the bag, like nine ounces or something, and stir it around until it is all wilted. And then you're going to pour in your penne and stir it all up and then it's so ready. It is a nice meatless meal as well. Easy to throw together. And like I said, I'll have all the links down below for exact measurements and all that good stuff. But I served this with a slice of just Texas toast. And now we have got my version of like the chicken pot pie with biscuit casserole type thing. And I have diced up an onion. I think it's about three or four medium carrots or something. And six Yukon Gold potatoes, as well as one large chicken breast. You could put more chicken. I just, I had them all separated and I knew I had a lot of potatoes and stuff. So I didn't even know if I had room for more. But it was the perfect amount so you just you do you if you want more chicken cut it up but then i melted half a stick of butter and a little bit of oil in my skillet through all the veggies in there i poured some celery salt a good amount of all of them i love my seasonings and then a bunch of poultry seasoning and seasoned salt and then i stirred that up really well well a little bit of salt too and the only thing I will say is I needed just a little bit more salt, maybe a little more. We had to put a little bit at the end, but other than that, it was so good. But here we go. You're just going to throw in the salt and pepper here. I think I kind of forgot about it there for a minute, but the salt take these up for a few minutes and then you're going to add your chicken in and do the same and put the lid on until the potatoes are tender. And now that the potatoes are completely cooked through, I poured in a third of a cup of all-purpose flour and I'm just sauteing it up pretty well until, basically until I see no more white, until I get the flour good and cooked up. And I'm pouring in a good little bit of parsley, fresh parsley would have been really good too. I just didn't have any. And then I'm pouring in about a cup, yeah, a cup of heavy whipping cream and about a cup 
cup to a cup and a half of chicken broth. You just play with it here, your desired thickness. You know, I think I end up adding a little bit more of each at some point. And also at this point, you are gonna already have your biscuits cooked halfway through the cook time. Like I had mine in the oven for six minutes. I think the normal time was 14 minutes, just par cooked and then pour it into a nine by 13 inch baking dish. I have topped it with my biscuits and I baked it for about 10 more minutes at whatever the time was on the biscuits. I took it out, poured, brushed it with a little bit of butter or a lot, I don't know, <laughs> and then sprinkled some more parsley on it and they were done. Excuse the funky looking biscuit, but like I kept having to check. I was so afraid I was gonna pull out some undone biscuits, but it was so good. This went, there was hardly any leftovers. I really wish this would have made even, or even more. I need to get a bigger casserole dish. I highly suggest this. I was really proud of myself for it. It was so good. And I have been seeing that like four ingredient meatloaf with a box of stuffing and I wanted to give it a try. So, I am putting three eggs into a bowl because I'm using a little bit more meat than it actually called for. So keep that in mind, but I'll have it linked down below. And then a whole box of whatever stuffing you want. And I decided just to throw in a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of that caramelized onion seasoning as well. And then you're gonna put in about a quarter of a cup of ketchup. And like I said, the recipe calls for a pound of, yeah, a pound of hamburger meat, and I used a pound and a half. But I also decided to throw in some Parmesan. So that was just some extra things. It was kind of, that four ingredient is just basically your base. You know, you can do whatever you want. But then here I'm throwing in my meat that I <laughs> defrosted in my microwave and almost cooked it too much. But I have my preheated oven right now to 350 and I'm pretty sure this cooked at right at an hour. Just check it because I know all different meat types, you know, there's more fat. It, it's going to cook differently. So be sure to check it because there's nothing worse than a dry meatloaf. So 165, that's your target. Yeah, and the only reason that the counter is clean now is because I put it in the oven and then thankfully within a minute remember that I had not put the ketchup on so be sure to have some ketchup on there before you put it in the oven and now I'm just making mashed potatoes in my instant pot I cut them up and I cook them on high pressure for 15 minutes don't have to be tiny as you can see here and I threw in about half a cup of half a cup half a stick of butter and I always kind of just like <laughs> I was gonna I don't know, like a little nook. I create a little butter nook or something. A little butter cave to try to get it all melted with the hot potatoes. But then I decided to throw in some garlic, garlic Parmesan. Another new seasoning I have that I've been playing around with by Weber. As well as a pretty good bit of salt and pepper. Some sour cream. And at this point I just mashed it up a little bit. And then I added my milk, cheese, and bacon bits and I didn't record this but an additional side with this I made like little zucchini type chips in my air fryer I just sliced them up really thinly with like a mandolin slicer I put a little bit of oil tossed them with some Tony's uh, Tony's blah 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 Creole seasoning and I air fried them about 390 for about seven or eight minutes and then I opened it up put a little bit of parmesan cheese and cooked for about another minute or so till they were ready and you'll see those things are delicious there's just something about that combination with that melted parmesan mm, one of my favorites but this is going to conclude this video 
thank you so much for watching i would surely appreciate it if you joined my youtube family and be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and i will see y'all in my next one